tap into your most original thinking, organize your ideas, and create the opportunities to launch your creative work. Unlocking your world of creativity with best-selling author and brand innovator, Mark Stinson. Well, welcome back, friends, to our podcast, Unlocking Your World of Creativity. We're on episode 199. So we've uh, reached a milestone of nearly 200 episodes, 100,000 downloads. It's because we go all around the world talking to our creative practitioners. And we're traveling today to one of my favorite cities in the world, Stockholm, Sweden. And we're talking to Frederick and Eric of the SNASK Agency. Frederick and Eric, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you much. much. This starts out with an issue like I know my agent promised me that this would be the 200th episode that we oh. were doing. So I'm a little bit like, <laughs> the hell. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I love Pleasure that. to be here, even though it's not the 200th. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. That and then I'll good. have a talk with your agent after the show and clarify. <laughs> yeah, we, we will as well. <laughs> I love it. Well, Eric and, and Frederick, your work on your website and what I've researched, it's very emotional. It's very uh, provocative. It's very colorful and energetic. And right off the bat, you say that SNASK is your future romance. Now, I don't know if I'm looking for a new romance in uh, life, but certainly in creativity, we always have our eye on something new and different. Why do you characterize it in such terms? I think we think that the so-called professional world is kind of built on conservative ideas and frameworks and structures. And uh, we believe we don't believe in business to business or business to consumer. We believe in human to human. Uh, so I think that in that in that terms, uh, in any kind of relationship, if it's an agency to a client or uh, a brand to a consumer, we strongly believe it's still one human being sending a message that would be received by another human being. And in that sense, we believe in romance, uh, even if it's between to humans or if it's between a brand and a, a human or a, yeah stuff like that. So that's kind of how we explain it. And Eric, mm -hmm. do people come to you for that style or are you having to sell it every day? I would say that a lot of people come to us today, at least for that style, but then you have to live up to it. Uh, so meaning that you, you know, in one way we, you, we always have to, I don't know if I would call it to sell it, but to be ourselves more. And like, you know, working in an industry like this and as consultants or whatever that has to deliver a lot all the time. And, you know, it's easy to sort of um, fall down into like patterns and just doing things according to some uh, plan and, you know, and, and forget about that emotional part maybe and the, the fun of doing things sometimes. So I mean, we have to challenge it or challenge ourselves. But today, at least, uh, I think a lot of people are attracted or know that we want to do it like this way. And that, that's why they contact us, too, mm -hmm. for sure. And most people see the execution part. You know, they see the results of your other campaigns. Do they appreciate the, I guess, the rigor or the process or the work that's going to go into creating that kind of output? Yeah, but I mean, I think people do, but I think many, at least like companies that contact us that maybe are, especially if it's like a little bit bigger companies that are used to a very like um, a typical process of doing things that they are a little bit nervous, like I mean, because they, 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 they have expectations of it being a bit crazy and or like, you know, standing out, but maybe sometimes that's not even the case like we we try to be very professional in what we do it's more you know again the output and the the attitude uh of not bullshitting too much and trying to like come up with something that you know stands out in a in a fun way uh that's the the goal but like getting there sometimes doesn't i mean it doesn't always become like a crazy circus of you know whatever it is you know so i know like even some some clients that i talked to later they were like even when they signed with us they had like internal meetings like okay so we choose snask for this so everyone be pre prepared 
it could get crazy. <laughs> they might be say weird stuff. We need to get ready to like uh, structure ourselves to meet this, to balance them, you know. But then afterwards, they were like, "Oh, you were the most professional client we ever worked with," you know, or <laughs> for them or agency. So uh, it's yeah, it comes a little bit with the expectation. And Frederick, you know, again, the the work or the expectations, as Eric was describing. You know, oh, it's going to be a wild ride, but there's still got to be a brief. There's still got to be creative reviews. There's still got to be market research. You know, how do you balance the, I guess, the nuts and bolts of the process with the uh, creativity of the work? I mean, I think everything that we do, Mark, is is it's steeped in brand strategy and our strong belief in what that is. Uh, and like one part of that is we strongly believe in making enemies and gaining fans. And what we mean by that is if you're a brand today and you have opinions and you stand up for your opinions, you will for sure get enemies, but you will also get the right kind of enemies, enemies that won't buy your brand or like you anyway. And you will also get real fans, fans that are following you, that don't just scroll by your post. They like it, they comment, they tag their friends, they share the post, etc. Basically called engagement, something that other companies pay a lot of money for. But you know, for us, it's just... If you have opinions and you can sign up for them, uh, we, we, we can help you find that. We find your values. We find what you can stand up for and also what you can stand against, making their brand more clear. And uh, yeah, so I mean, sometimes this process is not the crazy. It's not like we opening champagne during the strategy meeting or the five hour long workshop with the board or the, the, the key stakeholders. Uh, then it's more serious, but we do push them. Uh, and we, I mean, also we can do if they want to. Yeah, 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 champagne anytime. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we also want to be. We also want to be. Uh, what do you say? Very honest and genuine in in our approach. So we don't care if someone is CEO or or chairman of the board or anyone. We just want people to in this room to be humans and talk about the brand from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And I guess from a business standpoint, you know, it's easy to say you have a philosophy. We can gain fans, but we might make enemies. Has that ever cost you from a business perspective? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've lost we lost a client once because we talked ill about the Swedish king, and he's not a very, like, he, he, he'd done things uh, that could have been uh, a Me Too scandal, basically. Uh, so it wasn't very strange of us to, to talk about him in that way, but then one conservative client pulled out uh, because they had this advisor uh, who didn't like that we talked this way about the king swedish king uh he also mentioned that we said the f word many times you know, during our talk and he demanded us to take this talk down from this channel called youtube uh so and we think that it was kind of a good sign that we didn't listen to that person and eric what about from the brand's point of view you know, it's, again, easy to say we want to disrupt the market, but sometimes that's a little messy. Has it ever cost the brand or does it, do they always ultimately gain because they take a stand? I mean, I would definitely say that they always ultimately gain from it. But but in the short term, you know, the first reaction and stuff, then definitely brands can feel uh, the heat a little bit. And, you know, that's when they need to be... Uh, confident and calm and and remember their beliefs and stand up for it you know and and don't panic you know i mean there's so that's where human not you know to react to things and and i mean i i think we can see it right now in the world it's like with the war this, the wars but also like the the, the invasion of ukraine etc that's going on now it's like the world is panicking around it and there's a lot of things happening here in Europe with um, militarizations and we're all joining NATO now and everything is going, you know, the debate around that would never have sounded like it is sounding right now, like just a year ago or, or so on, um, or just before the war, basically. So, I mean, it's, it's scary sometimes when, um, you know, when things happen and we start reacting to it too much, too, um, too, like um, being too scared, basically. So, I mean, that happened. And that, it, so, I mean, it's, it's a big jump from talking about war and talking about some commercial brand, but definitely in that world, 
uh, of ours that happens, but but we we have never experienced that they have gained from it in the long run. Mm-hmm. It's more that they come out yeah. stronger, you know. So and they, also, uh, yeah. yeah. Also, the long run, in the long term, it's like if you have a direction, if you have a goal with where you're going in a in a disruptive manner, uh, then you can take better decisions along the way instead of, as you say, Eric, in the war or, or wherever, react to something yeah. that happens instead of following your long long path. For example, a, sh- a shoe brand that was cool, uh, if they started to sell Crocs, uh, for example, yeah, they would gain financially for a short period of time, but they w- their brand would become more and more less cool. And in the end, Adidas and Nike wouldn't sell, send their coolest sneakers to for them to, to sell in their shops. Um, so ultimately, in the long term, they reacted to a financial hit, but in the long term, they diluted their own brand, which became a much bigger cost in the end. Mm-hmm. And I mean, not saying that this is easy. I remember when we were quite new, uh, I mean, being this like rebel a little bit, trying to... Uh, you know, uh, act in a different way, being more human on ourselves. And then we had a short period where our reaction to, you know, do, having to fight around that every day was to suddenly dress in suits, like really made, like tailor-made <laughs> suits. And we were like, oh, we need to have this to balance our craziness. So people see that we are, you know, visually, they think that we're professional or whatever. It was ridiculous, uh, but we did that for a few months, and maybe we need to go through that. I don't know, but like, uh, it is uh, easy to to um, start, uh, I would say, doubting sometimes mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. when when you get some, uh, uh, say, resistance. In, yeah, in things. Well, you I'm do. thinking about internally with your staff. You know, again, this brand that you've built must be attracting a lot of great talent. But on the other hand, do they know what to expect when they get in <laughs> and start working with the team? It's, it's, gotta I mean, be it's, kind, of, yeah. it's kind of funny because sometimes when, when people come in, especially interns, um, they kind of sit, they come in at like 10 o'clock, uh, maybe they're hungover, sit down in a sofa, drink a glass of water and laugh a little bit. And everyone is like, but what, what are you doing? Because we, we start way earlier and this is, and they kind of think that the only thing we do is having fun and games and drink champagne. Uh, but behind this whole, that whole part of the brand, it's hard work and professionalism, a lot of professionalism. So I think a lot of people get a bit shocked when they come to our office, seeing that everyone works all the time and pretty hard. Um, but for us, it's like, that's the, the reason, that's a way to balance up the, the, the crazy side. Otherwise, we would only be clowns. Uh, and yeah, we can be clowns privately, but professionally, we, we, uh, we balance that up with a very high level yeah. of professionalism. And I mean, there's no like rule about that you have to act in a certain way or something. It's just like when we work hard, we work hard. You know, we want to make amazing things. And then sometimes you need to really um you know dig dig deeper would say like to, to you know to do to do that you need to work a lot but then when we don't need to work a lot when the, we have breaks or pauses or you know or whatever it is that we then we 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 uh we, we make sure we have fun and we make sure that that there's um you can take it uh, easier you know so it's like it's it's a lot of like you know having um an ambition in in the work and like a pride in like your uh, profession etc mm-hmm. you know and then yeah i think most people that have that they want to they know what it takes you know to to deliver on something sometimes well you're you're reminding so. me that when people do have a creative passion they don't want to come in at 10 they want to get up and get after it you know yeah. they, they yeah. want to start to but you've also i think embraced this idea that you're kind of a collection or group of uh, misfits you call them misfit geniuses. <laughs> you know? that, and yeah. so I, I don't exactly. They got to be both misfit and genius. Is that what you're saying? I don't know what I'm saying, but it, but, but it is. But uh, yeah, but it, I, I mean, it's a funny way to to sort of uh, express to that it's more fun to dare to be, you know, yourself 
if you have some funny weird thing that is you then express it and be that person you know and and you can do that even if you're working or hanging out with clients or whatever it is uh and i think it can also add something to the to the work um, you know as well so it's more like we're not robots uh and again like yeah so i think that's sort of what we are saying with that yeah mm-hmm. and also yeah. we want we don't want anyone to come and try and fit in not the yeah. employee, not intern, not client, no one. I mean, we want everyone to just be able to be whoever they are uh, down to their roots uh, or their deepest personality traits and just be able to be that with us. Uh, I think that for us, it makes it makes everyone in the whole world a misfit genius in a way because if we have norms of how to act, yeah. how to look, how to behave, how to, but no one actually fit into the norm. You're all kind of misfit geniuses if we if we see it that way, and no one no one basically fit into that that norm and standard of the world. And I know from my own agency experience. I mean, uh, on the outside, there's often this image of the single creative director. He's sort of the conductor, bringing everything together. But really, advertising is a team sport. And if you don't have yeah. these variety of talents and people, and I mean, we we talk about diversity in a lot of different ways. But if you don't have a diverse team, the the work will be also cookie cutter. For uh, sure, under, for sure, hundred yeah. percent. And that's something that we, I think, uh, our industry needs to. St- I mean, still needs to work a lot on uh, diversity in many ways. You know that that we are still lacking, and something that we trying to work quite actively with now to like really like expand our team and and. Uh, try to um yeah like you say it's needed to to be able to go, do good work and thinking sure. about uh your city you know you're in stockholm there's a lot of cultural uh inputs a lot of cultural influences how does building a brand agency in stockholm uh, and then launching into global work how have you found that well i think First of all, we came from, we studied in the UK and then we came back to Sweden. And Sweden is kind of uh, very minimalistic in when it comes to design and branding and stuff like that. So they kind of believe that minimalism came from Sweden, same way as German, German, Germany thinks it came from Bauhaus and Italy thought it came from the Futurist Manifesto and the Swiss thought it came from Analytica and the Dutch mean everyone can claim minimalism. And so does Sweden. Um, but in that sense, we wanted to revolt against that. We didn't want to fit into that world. We wanted to be bold, colorful. We wanted to do work that created and stirred up emotions uh, for the viewer or the person integrating with the brand. Uh, and in that sense, I think that in Stockholm for, for the first five years at least, we were kind of, no one kind of knew about us. Misfits. Um, misfits, yeah. But online, <laughs> online people knew about us. And online we liked it more where you weren't weren't judged on your age, on your geography or your ethnicity or your sex or your uh, anything. It was basically just like, oh, this is your work. This is how good you are. And you were only based on, on your work, which we liked a lot more. On top of that, Sweden and Stockholm is small uh, i mean it's like it's something that that you discover quite quickly when you start like comparing and 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 working with the world you know it's like so it's a very like tiny industry here and especially in the design world it's barely is an industry i would say you know it 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 goes together a lot with advertisements so, and and that was also something that we noticed that like trying we were always trying to be big online instead and like uh, be more have more like uh yeah we didn't even look to sweden so look more abroad and global and then we also found a more uh, a place like uh, where we were more appreciated maybe or or that we could like um say talk to people on on uh, with a similar approach we found people that understood us and vice versa more so so we always had a lot more fun, like communicating with the world around what we do than, than maybe here in Sweden. So yeah, exactly. And also I think that that um, 
when it comes to trends, Stockholm is the 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 city in the world that is most sensitive to trends. So you, to a lot of brands uh, lo- launch new products and stuff in Stockholm just to see if it works or not. And we're very like prone to like jump on trends. And in, in our industry, there's and in Stockholm, there's a lot of agencies and designers and creatives jumping on trends all the time. And I think we have always been against trends and we don't really like that way, like just do something new because it's new or we always wanted to find our own way of doing things. No, it's, it's very funny with our own sort of style, within visual style, that we more or less at least been, it's been similar throughout all these years, you know, even though like we try to change it a little bit or update it, but it's like in the same direction anyway. And and it's funny because, yeah, then here and there through these years, it's been like when I have been meetings with other People, they, they can sometimes say that our style is trendy or sometimes they say that it's not trendy or, you know, we've been like, we've been going it's out the in trend. Yeah, yeah, yes. we're just like... It's good that the trend just, comes up to you every now and then. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it comes and high fives off us and we are like, great, great. Okay, now we can be trendy again for a while. I like uh, that. It's kind of fun. Well, Frederick and Eric, what a great conversation. Before we close, I want to make sure people know how to connect with you and uh, learn more about your work. Visit our website, uh, follow us on Instagram, especially follow Eric. His name is Fessus. He means tired in Latin. Uh, You won't see a lot of content, but the little content you see will be very precious. There you go. Mm -hmm. Because when he when he stimulates and wakes up, then it's uh, really good stuff. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, guys, one yeah. of the themes of our podcast is not just the actual coming up with the ideas, but it's actually getting the work out into the world. And, uh, you know, uh, give us some insight into, I guess I'll say, pitching the work, convincing the client, this is the campaign to go with. This is the design to launch. Give us some insight into your experience there. I mean, for us, it's all about taking the the client by the hand, leading them through the process. Like you lead someone to the dance floor. You can't just expect them. Like you can't just throw up a new design in their face without the explanation and without selling it and just saying, hey, here's a new logo and not saying anything. But you need to take them on a journey, how you were thinking, the heritage or the thought behind the strategy, how it connects with the brand, everything. And then when you then show the whole the logo type, it's like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. I understand it now and I want this and this is amazing. Uh, of course, sometimes you can go wrong, but if you don't do that, you, you don't tell your story of your work, the client will make up their own and that's how everything works. Yeah, and sometimes you need to remind them of why they started working with you in the first place, you know, that there was something there and they put a trust in you and, you know, they, they, you need to, they need to sort of, keep that trust and 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 uh, you know and and i think uh, also when they don't it's often some fear it's something that they are afraid of in their role or in their you know and it can be good to find out what that is so you can uh, you know meet it uh basically and talk about it because sometimes they don't tell you they just like they just talk about that ah, i'm not sure i'm not sure i'm not sure but then you need to find a why, actually, and that, that's when you can convince them. That. Yeah, why they came to you in the first place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's often the best one. And you're just like, hey, you, you always had more fun saying yes than no in your life. Go on, let's do it. You know, and be yes. like, trust us, let's do this. You know, let's so. see the results. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. And listeners, continue to come back to our podcast for insights like this. Eric and Frederick have given us some real world insights, some some of their experience, some of their manifestos even of how to disrupt and how to change the world through branding, through advertising, and through this kind of communication and client relations. I've really appreciated it. So thanks for coming on the show, guys. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Mark. It's awesome. It's been yeah. a pleasure. And go yeah, to their really website, snask.com, S-N-A-S-K. Well, today we've stamped our creative passport in Stockholm, Sweden. We're going to continue our around the world journeys to talk to creative practitioners, how they get inspired, how they organize their ideas, and most of all, how they gain the confidence and the connection to launch their work out into the world. So until next time, I'm Mark Stenson, and we've been unlocking your world of creativity. We'll see you soon.
Unlocking Your World of Creativity with best-selling author and brand innovator, Mark Stinson. This program was produced by BSB Media, creators of IntelliQ Leadership Stories, Unlocking Your World of Creativity, and thepeaceroom.love.